Welcome back to DXB Today, another tremendous show and a very technical show as well. So we are talking tech and all of the wonderful things that come with it. And our next guest on the sofa is the VP of International and Partner Marketing, Power School. Mr. Sam Sale, thank you very much for joining us. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. So tell us more about Power School. So from what I know of it, it's, um, it's an app based yeah. and it, it, it keeps an eye on the activities of children's, uh, wh what they're doing, where they're going, the timings and so on and so forth. Exactly, so what Power School really excels at is being that platform where all the operations that a school may have happen in one place. So that can be attendance, scheduling, grades, even the teaching and learning that happens in our LMS. Uh, the nice thing about having all that data in one place is it also allows us to securely create a data as a service, a data lake. So whenever you're going in to look at information for a student or for a teacher, you get the whole view and all in one place. And so you can make better decisions about how to help that student, how to help that teacher, based on a comprehensive overview of all the different things that make that person who they are. Now, 50 million students around the world. How have you seen this app being used differently or how, how does it, I don't know, do, do, are, are different needs met in different places? Do you need to no, tweak that's, it? Absolutely, that's a, that's a great question. No, it's, it's the, the nice thing is that every school is different and, and because Power School has been around for 25 years, we have a lot of experience with understanding the unique needs of this school versus that school based on the population that they serve, based on the curriculum that they teach. And so what we really see in terms of the flexibility is, is really having the ability to work with schools and partner with schools and understand, okay, what's your next step toward better? And how can Power Schools approach to securely centralizing data and the applications you need help you on that step toward digital modernization. And you're obviously getting feedback from teachers and students and parents and so forth and simple. And you were a teacher, right? Exactly, yeah. So, I was uh, a teacher, I used like, Power I got my feedback. <laughs> and how easy is it to use it? Like, because you know, a lot of parents maybe are not into technology. Is the interface easy? Is it uh, feasible for everyone? Exactly. It, well, first of all, it's easy now okay. uh, because you have one login, one place to go for all of the different data that you need, all the different workflows that you may have, but it's continuing to get easier. Uh, we, we announced earlier this year Power Buddy. It's our built-in AI chatbot that gives the assistance to drive um, collaboration between teachers and students, to give recommendations to students, to uh, have a little bit of content that is going to help them based on their unique needs. Even parents who maybe have a new phone number. Okay. Hey, how do I update this information? And of course, educators, teachers, and administrators, giving them the ability to save time with that AI generative assistance right there where they're already going and using that data that's complete and comprehensive to fuel the recommendations that AI is making. So that way they're not getting a, a partial recommendation, they're getting something that's gonna be truly personalized toward the educational needs of the student, of the teacher, of the parent. I wish we had something like that. I know, <laughs> when I was growing up. <laughs> that would have been nice. Yeah. You know, Sam, something that really uh, I wanna think about and ask you, and I'm slightly concerned about as yeah. well, is the security as a parent. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that and, and how that we're secure and we're safe? Yeah, no, it's a huge, because I mean, attacks are on the rise. And so one of the things that Power School does is we stop over a billion attacks per year. Uh, we partner with companies like Microsoft and AWS to make sure that we have that 24 seven, 365 protection for all of that student information. And the nice thing is we're bringing AI to that data. We see a lot of times, um, you know, AI companies are popping up everywhere and they're saying, okay, well, feed us your data, send it to us. And that creates an issue. Uh, what we do that's different is by bringing AI to your data and to your workflows. We're not saying, hey, log into this new system or send your data somewhere else. We're keeping it in one place where it can be secured, safe, and private. And, and that's really one of our key differences is making sure that we're increasing the adoption of AI by making it easy to use and secure because no matter how great the tool is, if it's not secure, it's missing the mark when it comes to protecting our children. I was just wondering, how do you think AI and tools like PowerBuddy, as you mentioned, are gonna help students? Well, the biggest piece that you'll see is that your teacher has more time uh, by saving teachers five minutes here by making this recommendation or 10 minutes there by, by creating this lesson plan for them. Your teacher will have more time to do what they're actually passionate about, which is supporting teaching and learning. And of course, for you, uh, you know, I know sometimes when I was a teacher, uh, there just wasn't time to give everyone unique homework, for example. Uh, so the piece that Power School is really doing now is giving you assignments and homework and, and activities that are based on your interests and on your needs. So that way you're getting a unique personalized experience 
and not just, well, this is the homework the whole class is doing. So really unique in terms of helping you based on your personalized needs. And in terms of ethics, how do you ensure that teachers use it for the right reasons or students use it for the right reasons? For instance, teachers don't write it for a student's reports. Wow, these guys really are smart. I told you. <laughs> uh, no, that, that's a great question. I love that question. So before we started doing any sort of research and development, uh, we really actually sat down with our legal team and we were like, what are, what are our ethics when it comes to AI and how do we create a strong approach to having principles that guide everything that we do? Uh, so that's things like making sure that we're keeping the human at the center. We're making recommendations to your teacher, but we're not bypassing the teacher. Uh, we're also continuously meeting with our early adopters and seeing how it's going, getting their feedback. And that's allowed us to identify, um, you know, and, and make sure that we're eliminating hallucinations or bias within the AI and have a real ethical approach to, um, to, to how it's rolled out. And for administrators and, and those that are in charge of the implementation, making sure that they have clear and transparent controls and that there's no uh, secret black box, so to speak, when it comes to communicating how AI is gonna be used uh, in the classroom, how this is gonna be used to parents. Um, I, I liken it very much to 10 or 15 years ago when we started seeing students bringing devices into the classroom. You know, there was a little bit of fear at first, like, oh, well, they're just gonna be on their phone all the time. And, and so let's, let's not do it at all or let's do it too much. And, and we had to find that middle ground where we could say, okay, there's a time and place for how this can be used. Very similar to how we're seeing AI being rolled out within our schools. We don't want it to be used to write your whole essay for you, but it could be really useful if maybe we're thinking about, okay, what are our first uh, two or three ideas and how can AI be brought in at the right time? But when you're not supposed to use it, being able to have those controls to turn it off so that you can actually show what you know and, and do what you do without the assistance of AI. Well, Sam, a fascinating subject, which I think we could explore for about another <laughs> couple of hours. Um, we do have to wrap this up, but just very quickly, we know you're visiting from California. Uh, you're here in Dubai. How many schools here have actually implemented this program? Oh, we're, we're seeing um, you know, well over 20, 25 schools just within the UAE, and then a larger amount of schools within the GCC area who have already gotten started with PowerSchool. Uh, one thing that they really care about m most is getting their data in place first. And so that's an area where we're seeing a lot of schools kind of continue to make sure they are AI ready by having that comprehensive data all in one place. And so we actually have a great event on Saturday at Dunecrest American School where we have, I think about 200 uh, educators coming in, some power school users, some looking to learn more, but it's really a day of learning. So that way we can communicate with each other about how AI is going and also learn from one another uh, as part of the greater good. Well, Sam, thank you so much. This has been a fascinating subject. And guys, you're a fantastic, great co-host yeah, over here, on. right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Sam. Now on to today's spotlight. It's on an advertising agency assisting companies in navigating the digital advertising landscape. This is Nahmet Saif from Fly Robin. So I'm Nahmat Saif, I run Fly Robin Agency, and we're an advertising agency that specializes in helping B2B companies generate business and grow their revenue through digital advertising. So we've mostly been working with businesses in the region and specifically in the UAE. And I think one of the most interesting milestones is when we started getting business from outside of the region, so mostly from Europe and the US. And for me personally, that was a huge milestone. So there's two main challenges we faced. One of them is finding the top talent that is specialized in B2B advertising. And the second one is um, educating the B2B businesses on these new modern ways of growing their business. And it's a process that takes a lot of time, but in the end, that's how the nature of the business is. So the effort is worth it. So the eventual goal for Fly Robin is to become the number one reference in terms of B2B marketing in the Middle East and also across the world. So Dubai is a great place to run a business because of its people. When you have people that are here to explore different solutions and want to grow their business, they're always looking for opportunities and you're there physically, you're close to those opportunities. So being in Dubai physically helps you a lot grow your business, of course. And uh, also on a personal level, I think that being around people that are so ambitious helps you indirectly grow your business 
And this is why I think Dubai is a great place to do business. So Dubai is home for me. And second thing is that I think Dubai is the future. And I think that all the major cities in the world, in a decade or two, they are going to look like Dubai. And at least at the present moment, everybody is aiming to become like Dubai. And there we go, Fly Robin on the rise and flying to higher heights. Now I think it's time for the Daily Roundup with our man Ahmed. Yes, I've got the Daily Roundup. So as part of UE Innovates 2024, Dubai Electricity and Water Authority's Innovation Center has organized the second cycle of Clean Tech Hackathon, an initiative to combat climate change and promote environmental sustainability through the youth. They aim to provide 100% of the energy production capacity from clean energy sources by 2050. So I think it's amazing that they're aiming for, to do something like that, especially yeah. with like, it's a year of sustainability, everything is related to climate change and everyone's talking about it. And it's I think after COP28, exactly. everyone has been so inspired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Subject. Now, if it was up to you guys though, and you could create a bunch of different hackathons um, all over across the UAE, focused on students, what would, they, what, what would they be addressing? What would the ultimate goal be? I think especially for hackathons targeted towards a younger audience, Tackling these emerging technologies like AI, like climate change, is very crucial because this is the world we're going to live in. These students would be forced to tackle these challenges as they grow up. So learning about them and doing hackathons in them would be, would be great. Exactly. And I do think that any sector you go into in the future, whether it's law, medicine, TV, it's going to include AI. Does that mean that jobs are going to be removed? Not necessarily but more that they're going to be accompanied by something that helps them. So why not utilize that tool to your betterment? And you think that you might inspire companies in the UAE with, you know, I, th I think people look to youth for ideas, don't yeah. they? Of course yeah. they do, of course they do. This is, this is any, any fresh. proper understanding, big organization will know that you have to go to the youth to actually help and grow and innovate your business. Yeah. This is the thing, so DWA have done this fantastic thing. I love what they're doing. Uh, by 2050, I believe you will be there and you'll probably uh -huh. be the CEOs of uh, DWA. <laughs> <laughs> Are we stuck in our ways, guys? <laughs> you look at your parents, you're like, come on guys, keep it fresh. <laughs> they're like, we're not gonna say that because I wanna get grounded. <laughs> oh, wonderful. All right, well, let's see what else is coming up on tonight's show. I went down to meet the Arab hope makers, recognizing those who have created a positive impact on communities across different fields. Plus, we are discussing AI and digitizing education with the CEO of the Bedrock program. And Dina, not me, of course, Dina Stars, is all set to perform in the studio. So don't go anywhere.